This video is in support of 4347, and in it we will be uh, demonstrating the installation of a MySQL server on AWS. Um, we will then demonstrate how to connect to that server using MySQL Workbench. We will then be installing the Sakila schema and data, and finally running some test queries to see it all works. First thing, we're going to log on AWS. And sign in. Let's back up there a sec. So, not sure what yours will look like, your home page, but if you click on this AWS symbol, then you'll get various options. Uh, it's always changing. Um, default layout, reset. Um, I'm trying to find what the, the what the uh, the default looks like. Yeah. So if you hit services then um, you look for relational data services, RDS, so databases, and then um, RDS, RDS. Um, there it goes. All right, so nonetheless, um, home pages will vary uh, depending on if you how long you've had your account and so on. But uh, just try to show that you need to make your way to this page, uh, Amazon RDS for Relational Data Services. Okay, so um, the next thing is we're going to uh, create a database. So create database. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. And so it'll be a standard create and MySQL, right? And then um, MySQL, uh, if this isn't selected, probably is, but if not, MySQL community, doesn't matter what the latest version is, great, 8.0, 8 point something is what you need. Then under templates, we'll go to free tier, and then uh, no deployment options. And so this is the name of the database that you'll create. Um, that was like the name of the server. So I'm going to call it, um, uh, you call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it, because I already have a server set up, I'm going to call it uh, delete me. <laughs> um, now, obviously, you don't want that name, but um, I don't want to be conflicting with other things. The other database set I already have set up. Okay, anyway, so whatever you name it, just remember what you named it. Uh, leave the uh, miss. And so this would be the name of the um, um, user that uh, you'll need to log into the database from MySQL. And this is the master username. And um, it's like root. Uh, it has, it's like a super user in Unix. So leave it at admin and then give it a password. And of course, confirm it. And then just leave this alone. And this will be all fine too. I don't think any of it matters. Connectivity. So I'd leave that do not connect because you won't be. This is a VPC, virtual public cloud by default. Leave it alone. Subnet is default. Now here's an important one public access. So you need to have this set to yes, or you will not be able to connect to this server from your desktop. So um, yes. And then um, let's do new because you won't have any security groups. And um, give it a name. Now this it's just a name for your database. Um, I 
I just always name things security group, SG. Again, I'm just using a name I would get rid of later. I don't think there's any, well, let's see. Before I said, yeah, I'll leave the port number 3306. Leave it to password authentication. Um, nothing there. And um, you'll, this would be the name of the database, the schema, but we'll leave that till later. Um, you know, I don't think you'll have the server long enough to care, but uh, you could just leave that enabled. Um, you know, let's not encrypt. That seems the simplest thing to do. That way you don't have to remember the keys. And um, no logging, no care, don't care. Let's be able to, let's delete the database. So we'll do that. Okay. And let's create it. So let me uh, scroll back. I'll just scroll slowly through this and you can verify your um, own installation. Again, this name is whatever you want to make it. Make sure you've written down the ID and password. And remember you have to make this yes, publicly accessible. And remember the name of the security group, although you won't have that many if you're brand new. I'm writing it down myself. All right. Password authentication is good. You leave that blank. All right, let's create it. All right, that takes us to this page here. And um, so here is the server we're creating. And now it's in a creating status. So it takes a few minutes for AWS to complete creating a new uh, server and the way we get to this again if you go back to AWS again I have RDS here oh if you do view all services this is the okay, this is the page I was looking for at least I'm used to seeing that RDS and then um, and then DB instances will take you to your current servers. All right, um, I'm gonna pause for a second and then come back when it's finished. Okay, it's been a few minutes later and let's check on our server. Go to RDS again. And then instances. And here's our server, delete me. Now it's backing up, but that's okay. We can move forward from here. Norm eventually it'll go to um, available. It'll be turned green, it'll be available, but backing up is fine. All right, so we select that database. We will see that um, it has an endpoint. So endpoint is the public DNS name for the server. Uh, notice starts with, uh, ends with amazonwscom So it's, it's just a name. Now, this would work from your local P PC. But if you tried to use the server on a different machine, let's say at school. So the scenario is you set this up at home and or at school, it doesn't matter which and then try and access it from a different um, um, network, a, a different router, have a different IP address, it, it won't work, and uh, you won't be able to reach the uh, new server. And the reason is the security group. So here we're back on the Delete Me page. So let's look at the security group, which is the same thing as a firewall. So this is basically a firewall into the 
VPC, the virtual uh, was it private cloud, that um, I just want to say public, that we created for the server. So we can edit that security group. And it has opened the port, but for my local PC. And so this would work for my desktop, but I'm going to show you how to make it work from anywhere. So you could do this a number of different ways. Um, but you want to edit, so I'm going to you select the rule, and then you have this. Now you want to edit inbound rules. Oh, so okay, so inbound rules. Um, there's also an outbound rule, but that's fine. So edit the inbound rules. Now, the simplest thing to do is if we have this like this, you know, with, by default it created this. Uh, security group with this inbound rule and then if we go and just say uh, anywhere IP4 then it changes to this configuration and then we just save the rule and and so now it's source you know the source is just anywhere you know from any internet address so that's done so now we can go back to um, I'll just go back to AWS, RD, RDS, and the instance, and then delete me. And so now we're going to see if we can open this up in um, MySQL Workbench. So I'm going to start MySQL Workbench. Oh, there it is. And now there's a, I'm assuming you have the setup, SQL Workbench setup. Um, you can, um, oops, I wanted to delete that. All right. Um, and there's a video on YouTube for about setting this up. Plus factors, I, I, a video on my YouTube channel that was referenced in the project instructions, and the um, and there's any number of publicly other um, what do they call them? other creators that uh, have you know described how to set up my SQL Workbench on Windows or or OS uh, OS X. But at any rate, we're going to say new connection. And now we can give it a name. And the host is that. So maybe I let's go back here. So you have to copy the entire uh, endpoint. And make sure you don't put a space after it. You know, just get the whole thing back to the workbench. And then you paste that into and just kind of scroll through it, make sure it, you know, just, it's good. The port is 3306. Now we used admin. So this is set up, except let's, the nice thing about this uh, uh, setup wizard is we can test the connection before we accept it. So let's test the connection. And now we're going to get the password on. Save it, why not? And so it's working. So if you get to this part where you test the connection and it doesn't make the connection, <laughs> you get a failure, then there's no point in going any further. Uh, the only thing I can think of is you didn't select, if it's a failure, uh, is you didn't select public when you created the server or you didn't set up the security group correctly. But at any rate, it is working. Or your ID and password is another option, I guess. And then we'll save it. So now we have this new uh, connection. We'll click on that. And it should open up the server, which it does. And they have the default sys schema. And but everything else is ready to go. All right, so we'll pick up in the next one, next section. Okay, in this section, we're going to load the Sakila schema and data. So let's, starting from the beginning, open up MySQL Workbench, connect to our server. 
no schema. And so on eLearning, you'll see there is a folder, Sakila, and in it will be three uh, SQL files, the schema, the data, and then samples. So first we're going to load the schema to create the tables. So the way to do that is we need to load this SQL file into my work, the, the workbench. You could open a SQL here, open a SQL script, or you could open it here. But the easy thing to do is if you have an open editor, by default there's one open, you can just drag the SQL file into the editor and it will load. And you'll notice there's a bunch of creates, create tables in here, other types of creates. So to run the, run the script, the entire script file, we make sure nothing is selected, nothing is highlighted. And then we have this button execute selected or not everything if there is no selection. So no selection, it'll execute everything. And here we see it running and here we see it finished. And there's all the, the cautions are fine, but no red uh, errors should be thrown. And then if we go back to schema, we do a refresh. We'll see here's our table. Here's our schema table. And then... Um, and if we hit this little thing here, the info, it'll open up another tab. And in it, we can have just basically all of the data about the, about the schema. What we're interested in is the tables. So here's all our tables. and But there's no data in it, no rows, right? So what we'll do, I'll close that. And so we'll need to execute the second file, data. And this will take a while to load because it's actually very large. Once it loads, you see there's like 46,000 lines in it. So I wasn't kidding when it's large. Again, nothing selected. Execute. Now run for a while. Okay, so now um, I think it's finished. So we'll go back to Sakila. We'll open up that tab again, that inspector. And we'll go to tables, and it'll be empty. So this is a problem with the uh, latest version of MySQL Workbench, and I just keep hoping they'll fix it. But the way to populate this is you go to maintenance, and then you select everything here, all of the, I did a shift select and selected everything and then analyze the table and then it'll come back all okay. And then uh, go back to summary and still zero, but then if you refresh, yeah, see so we'll have rows and everything. And you'll know it's finished when store and staff have two. Uh, this will be the, these are the last two see def. You looked at this. The last tables to be populated was uh, a store, I think. Anyway, so store has two rows in it. And so you're ready. The, the scheme has been properly installed with its data. So at this point, you could, uh, you're ready to um, perform the First SQL assignment, which will have you writing queries against this uh, schema. Um, on eLearning, you also find, found that I included a ER diagram of the schema itself. Let me drag it over when it's finished. Here we go. And it's really very large, too large to fit into a comfortably fit into a um, single PDF file. So. It's kind of a mess that way. Let's see what else we have here. Um, I think there's a. You want to see the whole thing. Then there is a PNG, which has you know, all of the uh, it lacks resolution, all of the tables and the foreign, you know, the associations between them. And anyway. 
So the last thing we could do is we can demonstrate running a few queries using the editor. So the last file that we haven't looked at is the sample queries. So I'll drag that in here and pick that. And then, you know, we write, and this is the way you would, you'd, you'd start with a, uh, an editor. And you can say select, star from, uh, pick one, customer. And then you could highlight it and then run it. And then, you know, here is the result set. Also, how do I clear this? Clear. Let's do that again. Another thing you could do is just rest the cursor on, and then you can control enter, I believe. Yeah. So hitting control and enter executes the query. And you see there's 599 rows. So that there's 599 rows. You could say select. To verify that, you could say select count from customer, control return, and that's 599. So, you, know, you could do select star from retail, or retail, return date is null. Back here, paste that in there. Control return, and that's all of the rows with a null for uh, from rental. The table rental where this attribute or column return date is equal to null. All right, so that's uh, essentially all you need to know to set up the MySQL uh, server workbench, um, load the Sakila schema, and uh, you're on your way.